since probably 2000, this was 2016, I started doing the cryotherapy to the point where now I'll do cryo if I can't get ice baths. The ice bath to me is different. It's it's a it is cryo's like it's a cryo is a cheat code. So it's way easier. It's not mentally as as exhausting. I can get in. I can get in the bath the, the the bath in the morning sometimes, and I can tell you right now that I'm not in a good spot. Meaning that as soon as I get in, I'm like, oh shit, this is cold, and I'm yeah. not even I'm not even right in the right space. And I immediately have to zone myself in and say, you're chaos. You need to chill. You're moving too fast. The whole day's in front of you. And then you're in this present state where everything changes. And I have not adapted to, I have the Wim Hof uh, app on my phone and I, I really haven't done the, the, the trainings that, that could really elevate it. So I feel like I've only begun to understand. So talk, yeah. walk us through, walk the, walk the, the, the listeners through the differential when you accompany the breathing and the cold, yeah. how that really makes a significant difference. Yeah, just to close the loop on a couple of things you said on the cold. The cryo, cold is cold. It's all good for anybody. Get into a cold shower. You're going to be good, right? Physiologically, it, it, it's good. Um, however, from an emotional standpoint, a mind standpoint, first of all, there's nothing quite like staring at a bucket full of ice. So you've got to get yourself right. You cannot hide from that. Cryo versus an ice bath. The, 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 the water is... 60% more conductive than the cold air. It's going to be more challenging. Okay. So that's, you know, that's that thing. And, you know, if we have time later, we can talk about how long to stay in and all that. But the other thing is that you brought up that I want to, before I go into the breathing is, um, you know, immediately where you are emotionally in the ice bath, because if you're in a good spot, you're going to get into that ice bath. You're going to get your breath you're going to be calm. And then you're going to start thinking, Hey, maybe I could do some things. Maybe I could use my mind to warm myself. Right. You get to some really elevated places. If you're stressed, you're going to spend your time trying to get control of your breath. It is an absolute, um, 100% accurate assessment barometer of where you are from a stress standpoint in your life. It's just, it's a fact. And, you know, well, where are the studies on that? I don't have to give you any studies. I'm telling you, trust me. Okay. So that's just, just to close the loop a little bit on the cold. Now the breathing. <clears throat> now the Wim Hof method breathing is a very aggressive and specific breathing technique. It's, it's essentially a hyperventilation. Now, if Wim heard you say that it's not hyperventilation, it's a hoffer ventilation, yeah, hoffer you know, he's, but that's what it is. It's super aggressive. So you cannot do the Wim Hof breathing technique in the ice bath, because you might get lightheaded. You might even lose. And then you go under the water and now you're going to. So there are two separate things. Okay. That's most important to make clear. Again, the Wim Hof breathing serves a very specific purpose. And that purpose is to reset the nervous system. Okay. Well, you, your listeners just have to trust me that that's what it does, because all of the science now is on Wim's Wim Hof method. Com. Um, she doesn't do anything anymore without a team of scientists. So when we say, well, what does that mean? Reset the nervous system. That means that you literally, wherever you are elevated from a stress standpoint and whatever that does to you physiologically, mostly creating inflammation caused by stress, it eliminates the inflammation in your body, reduces stress. So now you're starting at ground zero, a great and beautiful place to start. Nice and relaxed, right? Why do people feel so good when they get and relax when they get out of the cold? That's part of it. It helps to reset the system. Okay. Now, the breathing, if the breathing is a quotient of one and the ice is a quotient of one, it's not one plus one equals two. It's really one plus one equals about eight, right? Something like that. When you do them both together, the science shows that it has an even more um, impact. Uh, more positive impact on your physiology and resetting your system and exercising your nervous system and things like that. Um, the breathing actually is more of a quotient of two to three to the ice uh, quotient of one. They show that the breathing has a greater impact on the physiology. Okay. But together, 
So it, that's really the analogy I should have made. It's not three and one equals four. It's three and one really equals like eight. Um, so that's that's the breathing. Uh, there's apps. You know what? Your your listeners. I have my own app that I have, and I just give it. It's not for sale or anything. And I only give it out to people who've been to my stuff and say, "How do I get this?" So yeah, you can have my app. So if you icecoldleader.com, anybody can reach out to me. We've got a 20 minute, a 40 minute and a 60 minute. Um, but I, I know some of the apps out there are a little wonky. Um, this is me literally leading you through it. Again, I don't make any money off of that, but there are apps out there uh, to teach you how to do it. So that's kind of the breathing in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it, but I don't know if that answers or covers what we wanted to cover. No, I, I think it totally does. I think, I think that the unique thing is that you know, you you go through your career and have great success at different levels. You um you have a family, and you're executing upon all of these leadership aptitudes inside of your family. And this is what most yep. people do, but very rarely do they pull the worlds together. Sort of like what you mentioned with the ice or the cold yep. and the and the leadership. Right? It was like one was missing the other. The calm that you created allowed you to think I, I feel like it's almost like a higher frequency like your, higher your, frequency. your awareness of frequency is is so much different so talk a little bit about that and we'll we'll dive deep it, it's it's a and I appreciate you acknowledging that again because and, and I'm not I'm not here to badmouth or degrade anybody else's leadership work because people are going to resonate who they resonate with but what I will say, like any good businessman, I keep an eye on what everybody's doing. And nobody is combining the leadership wellness that I'm talking about, the physiology. And then why do we need to do that? So again, we can clear our brain and to think through this process and not necessarily make wreck decisions, make conscious decisions. See, we get in trouble because we don't think before we make a decision. We just do it. Right. And then we're like, oh, my God, how did that go wrong? And when we allow this physiology of ours to get clouded with stress and the inflammation caused by stress, we can no longer think clearly because our body is now trying to deal with how am I handling this? And then we get sick. We know now inflammation is the root cause to every ailment that plagues us today now as a society. From cancer, everything else down. We get that under control. You're going to be in a good shape, and you're going to, and then you use this decision making process. So, we are combining two very unique things into one. And it, look, I have to call it something. I call it leadership, right? I have to market myself some way. I'm a leadership consultant, but most of my conversations go right here with my clients to the personal life. Okay, how are you doing this when you walk in the door, right? Where are you resetting yourself? Because I can tell you, I we had a terrible weekend this weekend. The kids were, it was just awful. The kids were at their absolute worst. And last night, I was like, that was the worst weekend we've had in a really long time. And I woke up this morning not feeling well. And so what did I do, right? I'm like, I am not, I'm not right here, right? Consciously, how I was interacting with my kids, my wife. I'm like, I gotta, I don't have time to breathe right now. I have time to jump in a cold shower and reset that. And I had to do it before I came on this because I'm like, well, I'm not going on Scott's podcast all jacked up. I forgot I got to settle down. It is a lifestyle. Okay. It is a lifestyle that you apply anywhere. And, you know, so again, and it's hard to do, right? It, it's hard to do. It's hard to do cold exposure. The breathing, you've got to do it for at least 20 minutes. It's hard to find 20 minutes sometimes. And it's not an easy breathing technique. It's all right. You're working hard. Right, and then right. you, you feel you weirdly feel relaxed after you do it. So anyway, that's you know, that's kind of the that's the combination again. So when we talked about we could move to war stories and Navy SEAL and FBI all day long, but this is the stuff, and this is the stuff that saved my life, you know, quite frankly, right? And then so when I the doctor, if I may. Yeah, please. Yeah, with the brain, right? As he looked at the brain scan, he said, look, this part of your brain's dormant. The part of your brain that 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 uh, requires you to react to um, or process emotions isn't working. 
And that's why you had such that struggle. He goes, but he said, your heart and your brain wave are in perfect sync. And this part of your brain is in the perfect alpha state. He said, it's complete. Those two things are completely inconsistent with that part of your brain being dormant. Right. And it, that's when he asked me, what is this process that you've been through? What is this cold? He said, that's why you were there. Then when I got the treatment, the first treatment literally came out of the treatment. My wife, once again, said that she didn't know I was getting any treatment. And she goes, what happened in there? I said, well, we went through the you know, the, the scan and this, that. Because is that it? And I said, oh, no, no, they did the treatment, right? They put the insulin into my nose and it trips in. The... He's like, you're different already. A month later, I went back for a second scan. The areas in my brain that were blue, and that, all that meant was there was no energy going to them. And I think the measurement was megahertz. Let's just say in the blue area in the first scan, there was two megahertz of energy in my brain. When I got the treatment, and then a month later, there was like 40 megahertz, completely healed. And, I, and the doc was like, I've never seen anything like this. And I said, well, what do you attribute that to? He said, I attribute it to the same thing that you were doing that saved your life. He said, this process that you put together saved your life. And then your mind, body, and spirit were so ready for a catalyst to help you that when we gave you that catalyst, you, your brain exploded with energy. And here's the other thing. This process that I did, it never stuck as a habit because my brain wasn't functioning. So I had to be thinking about it all day, every day. Miraculously, now that I'm healed, now it is a habit. I don't have to think about it, but I, I recognize the process going through it and I'm constantly going through it. I'm not perfect, right? Doesn't mean I get everything right. I don't. But um, that's the power of this thing, this, this cold exposure, this breathing, the resetting, and then a thought process. Without it, right, I get stuck in that, that pattern of negative behavior based on the injury. So, yeah. I, you know, I, again, I, I can't stress that enough. And maybe I'm going off too much. On no, no, you're, no, you're right on. You're right on target. I think I think for all the listeners out there, maybe you weren't in war. Maybe you didn't have a traumatic brain injury from a training accident, but you probably have had trauma in your life that has negatively impacted you in some capacity that puts you in a negative loop. And how most people have dealt with it that are successful is they become high performers. They become people that have way too much on their plate and they succeed and they continue to succeed, but they don't actually provide themselves with time to reset. And so I think what, what you're explaining is something so powerful because there's another simple technique here. And that is we have to create the foundational um, habits of our day in and around how to be the best version of ourselves, And if the best version of ourselves is, and it's for everybody, having time to check in with yourself. You know, I learned this during COVID. It was, it was uh, all of a sudden I couldn't go to the gym, couldn't go see the trainer I've been working out with for 13 years. Couldn't like, I was rushing constantly, right? Yep. Always in a hurry to do the next thing. I'm still a busy person, but I'm really trying in my life to slow down. And you know how I slow down? I start slow. And starting slow means I have an infrared sauna. I have that cold plunge. I have a workout. I do all of those things before I get into the sprint of the day. That sets the brain for whatever's going to happen, whatever negativity, whatever challenges. And I'll give you a great example. Summer time comes and my wife's a school teacher. My kids are out of school. They're teenagers. You know, and and we, we've got a lot going on, but I'm the only one going to work every day. So I'm getting up. I have a busy day and everybody else is having this relaxing thing. And I go into the garage and someone's in the garage. You know, it's the stupidest little things, but that changes the whole discipline, the whole process. I can reset so quickly, just like you yep. did with the kids. It was a simple thing by getting in the cold. I could say, okay, I'm here. People could come out, interrupt. Do whatever while I'm there, I am fully present. I am fully in a reset mode. And it's allowed me to be a much, much better version of who I used to be. It's it's not just to your point, it's not 1.0 to 2.0. 
It's yeah. 2.0 to 8 or 10.0. It's a major difference, Errol. If you like clips like this, I have a similar clip here. And if you want to watch the full video, click here.